Alrighty, you cool cats and kittens. Let's start talking about measurements and calculations in honors chemistry. This is where we get into how to collect data, why we collect data, and why we have to be really specific when we collect data for all of our calculations. And this obviously all starts with the very important method, the method that you have been going over forever, the scientific method. It's that logical approach to looking at a problem, you observe your data, you form your hypothesis, and make conclusions that are surrounding and supporting um, what you observed, you know? So Sherlock Holmes definitely implemented the scientific method. And you might be thinking, oh heck, why are we doing this again? And it's good because it's good to have that refresher. O is in the O heck for observation, H is for hypothesis, E is for experiment, and C is for conclusion. There are four major parts. Okay, you use your senses to gather information, you make this educated guess, which is not the best term, but most people identify it with that. It's not a guess. It's based off of what you see. It has to apply to the situation at hand. All right, you test your experiment. You have your different variables, which we will get into a lot with labs. Um, you have your independent, you have your dependent, and you have your control variables. So you have to set up something so that only one thing changes at a time. And then you see what is dependent on that change. And, you know, you have your controls. We'll talk all about that later. And then you have your conclusion where you come up with the finding, you know. And that conclusion is either a theory or a model. All right. The scientific theory, the most famous one, is going to be that with Sheldon Cooper. Oh, Penny. We love our Penny and we love our Sheldon, even though they're not together, but besides the point. Um, but uh, the scientific theory is going to be this broad, extensively tested explanation of why your results are the way that they are. Okay, it's a theory. It can never be proven beyond a shadow of a doubt. There could be something that disproves it, but the really important part of this, it does explain what you're looking at. It does explain all of the natural phenomena and it has supporting data. So it's not just like this wild guess. It actually does um, come up with it. So what is this Big Bang Theory? Well, that is the origin of our universe when time begins. And then this is the present day. We can't ever go back in time to think that, you know, we all came from a big ball of gas. But what they have figured out is that the light um, that is moving in the uh, universe has different signatures that shows that it is moving away from you because it has um, a delay to it. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more when we get into the, our light chapter. And if everything is moving away, that means that there must be something that it's moving from. So it might have all started with the Big Bang. Um, the model is going to be twofold. Uh, a model is going to be known beyond a shadow of a doubt. It can be visual, verbal, or mathematical. So sometimes this is known as a scientific law, okay? But a model can be more than just math. It can be more than E equals MC squared. It can be the model of our universe where we know all the different kinds of planets and um, all the different dwarf planets and stuff like that. Okay, so we're definitely going to see those quite a bit. Now, we implement the scientific method all the time, okay? Especially like when you don't feel well, like you have to make these observations. You're like, oh, my throat hurts or my head is stuffy, I have a runny nose, my body aches. You know, and then you come up with a hypothesis. You're like, oh, I don't feel well. I must be sick. You know, I think I'm sick. So you test your theory. You know, go to your mom and dad or whoever you uh, need to ask permission to stay home from school from. And if you stay home from school, you're going to make an appointment to go to the doctor. You might get a blood test for whatever's going on. You might get a throat culture if you think you have strep or something like that or COVID, 
not a throat culture. You get a nose test for that. And then they are going to draw a conclusion. Depending on the results of the experiment, you could either just have a cold, you could have strep throat, um, you might get antibiotics, you might get Tamiflu if you get the flu, um, any number of things. But yeah, we've been using this scientific method your entire life. All right, um, when we talk about gathering this data in the scientific method, we always take a look at a specific system. Since chemistry studies so much stuff, the matter and the change of the entire universe, we have to be really specific. So that specific portion of matter in our region of space is going to be what we're looking at. Everything else is considered to be the surroundings. So the system is the very specific part and the surroundings is everything else. So the system could be inside the test tube, it could be inside the beaker, okay? It's not gonna actually be the beaker itself, but it would have this um, very clear point uh, which we are looking at. All right, and in class, I will do the lycopodium demonstration for you. And lycopodium is, oops, sorry about that. Lycopodium is the tree pollen um, that comes off of trees. So all that yellow stuff, yep. Um, and I have some in class with a candle. And I have some on a mat. And at first, I add the candle to the lycopodium. And then the second time around, I add the lycopodium to the candle. And you see what the differences are. And we walk through the scientific method in order to figure that out. So it is um, very interesting how um, just the method of what goes on with an experiment. You can have the same exact variables in it, but just the method could lead to a big forest fire. All right, and that is our scientific method.